Hi everyone, welcome back to my booktube channel, Lisa in Bookland. So this is a small little video about my five favourite Elizabeths in literature, just to mark the death of Queen Elizabeth II, I suppose. Um, she's somebody that I did kind of uh, respect and like quite a lot. I suppose starting with her 2011 visit to Ireland, I remember that my English teacher had it on the telly, do you know, her arriving on the plane in that green suit she wore. Um, she had it on mute and we were actually supposed to be reading Wuthering Heights because we were studying it for leaving cert and my English teacher actually turned it off because she said I was paying too much attention to the television not enough attention to the book if you can believe it but uh, it was such a historic moment and I think it's just something that I'll remember forever like of course I was glued to the television watching her go to Crow Park in the Garden of Remembrance and laying that wreath and those few words of Irish she spoke out on August Accorda at the like state banquet it was just so unexpected um, it was just yeah it was just such a lovely thing and she just did the whole visit with such like such dignity and respect um it was just amazing so yeah this is my small little video about five elizabeths i really like in literature i, I think i think if i know there's a character called elizabeth in a book i probably am more likely to pick it up because fun fact about me i always wanted to be called elizabeth i really like longer names and i suppose i always felt lisa was a little bit too short and it felt like it could have been elongated to elizabeth but um no <laughs> i'm not going to change my name or anything but i always do really like the name elizabeth that or Ellen, I must just like names beginning with E. Um, but anyway, for each Elizabeth, I have a little quote about them or by them that I like in the books. I suppose that describes why, <laughs> why I think they're such great characters. I can guarantee it's my favourite quote by them or about them because I haven't, I have to do that, I would have to reread all five of these books and I'm not going to do that, but it's a start. The first one I'm going to talk about is Elizabeth or Beth March from Little Women. Um, Of course, everybody loves Beth. She's so sweet and caring. Um, she says that she'd like to stay at home forever and look after her parents. She loves to play the piano. Yeah, she's just lovely. So the quote I'm going to give about Beth March, um, as I said, she really likes music, but she's very shy. This old gentleman, and Mr. Lawrence, uh, Beth, uh, Beth and her sister are visiting his house. Uh, he lives next door. Um, they don't have a piano of their own and Mr. Lawrence knows this and he knows that Beth likes music. Um, so he says, the piano suffers for want of use. Wouldn't some of your girls like to run over and practice on it now and then just to keep it in tune? Beth took a step forward and pressed her hands tightly together to keep from clapping them. For this is an irresistible temptation and the thought of practicing on that splendid instrument quite took her breath away before mrs marsh could reply mr lawrence went on they needn't see or speak to anyone but run in at any time for i'm shut up in my study at the other end of the house here he rose as if going and beth made up her mind to speak for that arrangement left nothing to be desired please tell the young ladies what i say and if they don't care to come why never mind here a little hand slipped into his and beth looked up at him with a face full of gratitude as she said in her earnest timid way Oh, sir, they do care very, very much. Yeah, that's Beth March, the first Elizabeth. Not Elizabeth the first. <laughs> she won't be appearing. But another Elizabeth of that time period will, and that's Elizabeth or Liz Wicks, or later Liz Cromwell in the Wolf Hall, um, who is uh, Thomas Cromwell's wife. I just loved their relationship in this. Um, do you know, there was just... It started off, I suppose, as kind of a marriage of convenience, but it really grew into such a loving relationship. I love when it moved from kind of the area of like political intrigue and all of Cromwell's, maybe not scheming at that stage, but you know, all of the stuff he was involved in and then he'd go home and there'd be very much like the domestic environment with his children um, and like just Liz. And he had so much respect for her and vice versa. And when they moved to different houses and he like rose in life, she kind of very much kept him grounded. Yeah, I just, I really, Really, really enjoyed uh, Liz and indeed all of Liz's family in this book so um yeah and I think she did make a big difference to him in the book uh, a, a brilliant character I think uh, one of my favorites of this book so the quote I'm going to give from Wolf Hall um it is a very short one I suppose but it just says what I love about Liz and how like welcoming she is um Cromwell picks up a stray um called Reef Sadler and uh, he brings him home because it's raining and he's drying his hair with the towel and uh, he rubbed his head, Rafe's hair stood up in spikes, Liz came in, heaven direct me, boy your hedgehog, Rafe turned his face to her, he smiled, he slept on his feet and from that moment he's welcomed into the household and uh, Liz probably becomes like a second mother to him so yeah I just 
she's just such a warm and welcoming character she's wonderful so the next elizabeth i wanted to talk to is also a real historical character but i'm going to talk about her in the context of a historical fiction book and that is remarkable creatures by tracy chevalier and i'm talking about the fossil hunter elizabeth philpot um who is so this is an absolutely wonderful book and it focuses on two characters called mary anning and elizabeth philpot and elizabeth is kind of from a more upper class background than mary but she really like her and Mary have just the most wonderful friendship and she like promotes Mary in so many ways and like helps Mary do things that Mary is unable to do because of her social station <laughs> she goes on such a wonderful journey I guess what I loved about Elizabeth as well is kind of she's rather calm and dignified and like so independent that really comes across when like her special area of interest in fossils is like fossilized fish it's very much I suppose you know important in its own way but it's not as like flashy or ostentatious as say like dinosaurs that Mary has been finding but she just keeps like puttering away doing as much as she can in that field and she like appreciates the fish I suppose but even if nobody else does as immediately at the time I really like that about her and another I suppose interesting thing about Elizabeth is she kind of has a way of categorizing people by their features by their leading features she calls it so whether it's their eyes or their ears or their feet and just such an usual characteristic in a character and yeah she was just wonderful um like I think it started a book I thought that Mary was going to completely overshadow her but they really are like you know it's a 50 50 book between the two of them and yeah it's just brilliant I uh, highly recommend this book um for Elizabeth and Mary but definitely Elizabeth for the purposes of this video the quote I picked from Remarkable Creatures shows Elizabeth's independence and kind of the feeling or the want for something bigger she has I think and I love this one so on board the unity I had no choice but to see the greater world and my place in it sometimes I imagined being on the shore and looking out at the ship and seeing on deck a small violet figure caught it caught between the light grey sky and the dark grey sea watching the world pass before her alone and sturdy I did not expect it but I had never been so happy that's when she's uh, on a ship I suppose um going on a journey and just her horizons are broadening a bit and it's just it's a lovely quote. So the next book then is a little bit different and it's a children's book but it's an Elizabeth I've loved ever since I was small. It's Elizabeth Allen from the Naughtiest Girl books by Enid Blyton. I think these are my favourite boarding school books when I was younger. I really like the Mallory Towers as well but Elizabeth is just such a brilliant character and like of course all of Enid Blyton's boarding school books definitely have their problems and I reread them there about three years ago and I could see them a lot lot clearer but there still are some charming aspects to them if you can overlook kind of the problematic elements. It starts off the first Naughtiest Girl book that Elizabeth has actually been kicked out of her old school for bad behaviour and she gets sent to this other school. There, nobody's going to take any nonsense from her and the headmistress is going to give her like a last chance because she doesn't believe in lost pieces or whatever. So um, yeah, Elizabeth of course tries to wreak havoc when she goes in but her schoolmates aren't having like any truck with it at all and they're just like nope that's not on but she does she does eventually reform a little bit but still maintains that like spark and she definitely won't put up with any any injustice of any kind and sometimes she'll be like no no I have to take cab and still she'll end up like just lashing out. Spoilers if you do intend to read these books but they're obviously very old and I don't know if many people on booktube are going to read the naughtiest girl books for the first time. I think just it's such a good storyline for Elizabeth is like when she gets older she gets to become a monitor which is like I, I, I never heard of the position monitor. I don't know if it's peculiar to the naughtiest girl at boarding school or whether it's a common role in English schools or other schools. It's kind of like a prefect, you know, it's a position of kind of responsibility of, over other students. And she does something really bad and she actually gets the monitor role taken off her like publicly in front of the school. And she's so ashamed, but she still feels like she deserved it. And it's her, just her road to redemption with getting the monitor role back, which means so much to her I just yeah I just I just love Elizabeth she definitely sometimes her, go, her good intentions go astray which they do with us all so well, uh, these books were published in the 1940s so um Elizabeth Queen Elizabeth is probably a little bit too old to have read them but um maybe she did you never know the quote I've selected for the naughtiest girl relates to that circumstance I mentioned about her becoming a monitor and there we will leave Elizabeth sitting at the monitor's table dreaming of all the marvelous things she would do next term a monitor 
Would it really be true that the naughtiest girl in the school had become a monitor? I should still do silly things I expect, even now I'm a monitor, thought Elizabeth, but never mind. I've got my chance. I'll show everybody something next term. And I expect she will. So uh, yeah, that's just Elizabeth. <laughs> She's so proud. And finally then, the Elizabeth we've all been waiting for, and that's of course Elizabeth Bennet from uh, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Um, what can you say about Elizabeth Bennet that hasn't been said before? She is just such a sparkly character and she's so witty. Like she's the kind of character that I think if I met her in real life I wouldn't be able to keep up with her. Like you know she'd be running circles around me. She runs circles about, around most other people in this book. But still at her heart I think she is a really good person and um, of course her romance with Mr Darcy they're made for each other. I think I said to Jane Austen delight I still think of it often is like there's a scene at the start where they're arguing about something and in, in such a preview into their married life like they just really love like debating and I think she would have dealt quite well in the in the 21st century society so she would so Elizabeth is obviously such a well-loved character and so deserved. I haven't made up my mind of like my rankings of my favourite Jean Austen heroines like she definitely wouldn't be my favourite because I genuinely just love Anne Elliot so much but you know maybe she'd be up there in the top or around the top three. I will do that someday. I just I, I I can't I can't until I reread Emma because that's the one I haven't read for probably about two years now again. So, yeah, it's just so hard. Oh, where to get a quote for this book? Of course, there's so many great Elizabeth quotes, but I think the exchange I love most is that one I mentioned that banter with Mr. Darcy at the start of their relationship. Um, and she's arguing with Mr. Darcy about whether it's right to be persuaded by a friend. So she says, I'm not particularly speaking of such a case as you have supposed about Mr. Bingley. We may as well wait, perhaps, till the circumstance occurs before we discuss the discretion of the, his behaviour thereupon. But in general, in ordinary cases between friend and friend, where one of them is desired by the other to change a resolution of no very great moment, should you think ill of that person for complying with the desire without re waiting to be argued into it? It's just like, yeah it just shows i think the sharpness of her wish like who could say that on the spur of the moment without writing it down first definitely not me i wish i was that eloquent and i just i love that about her and i think that's one of my favorite exchanges in the whole book it's just yeah i love that one maybe not an obvious one but it's great that is the final elizabeth i'm going to talk about i'm not going to attempt to rank them in terms of my favorite elizabeths because they're all so different i hope you enjoyed this small little video originally i had thought maybe I would do a favourite book for every decade of the second Elizabethan era of literature and I was like oh god how could I do it for like the 2000s and the 2010s I just couldn't I couldn't do it in that short of time anyways I need a few weeks so um, yeah maybe it'll come someday but not this week so yes thanks for listening thanks for watching and I'll see you next Thursday for my next video